What's going on, everybody? Nigeria Chambers here from Big O Belt Media. We're at WonderCon 2024. I'm with a composer of one of your favorite shows here, and... Hi, everybody. My name is Philip White. Uh, I'm the composer for... Uh, one of the composers on Winchester's. Uh, and uh, I've... Gosh, I've worked on uh, Supernatural for the for its historic run, 15 yeah. year, yeah. 15 year run, uh, as well as several TV or other TV shows, uh, including Fraggle Rock, which is uh, actually starting season two, started yesterday. Uh, in addition to um, Gosh, Jexy, uh several Medea films, <laughs> several Tyler Perry projects, yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. Thanks for uh, taking the time today. Of course. Yeah, we got to obviously talk about Supernatural. 15-year run, and it's, you know, uh, and as you really know, like, you know, that's not always a given. And that no. fan base um, is going to give you all another 15, one way or another. Um, so passionate. Cosplay is even here today. Uh, just, just talk about the legacy of that show, um, and, and ultimately, how has that affected your career going forward? Oh, my God. I mean, that, that show, I have... Uh, well, first of all, I should say I started uh, assisting Christopher Leonard, who's one of two composers on that show, um, uh, way back, you know, in, when was it, 2005, I think. <laughs> um, I started out assisting him, just, you know, um, uh, working on sounds for the show. Little by little, uh, he was very gracious enough to have me write on it, and, and by the end I was doing a fair amount of writing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I... I have uh, him to thank for m much of my career, and Supernatural was certainly a core yeah. element of it. Um, so I'm very thankful for the fans who, you know, uh, have ensured its longevity. And um, and like I said, yeah, it was certainly it's a cornerstone of my career. Yeah. Um, and so much so that then when uh, that it spawned Winchester's, which was great. It, unfortunately, only for one season. Sadly, but I'll have uh, a comment once you're done. But sure. <laughs> um, but even so, very, very grateful for yeah. both of the shows because yeah. um, I, I really cut my teeth composing wise on on yeah on both. Yeah. And yeah, as a fan, we definitely appreciate your work on it. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, my comment, that CW just didn't know what they want to do for the last few years on their shows and their projects, and a lot of good shows got caught in that nix, yep. and you know the fans yep. we lose. So yeah. You know, it's, and it's it's, it's hard to support a network like that when like there's so much blood, sweat, and tears from your end, but the fans also it's there to show up each and every time. So yeah. in the Winchesters, um, I'm already I was right now we should be talking about at least the third season at this rate. You know? uh, but yeah, you're very kind. I wish, I wish, but yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, it, it's a lot of there was a lot of. Um, corporate reshuffling that was going on mm -hmm. well above our pay grades yeah. um, and combined with the strike and yeah. and, um, and it's not for you know they they as far as I know they did try and shop Winchester's around to other networks um, but I think be the strike everybody just wanted to hold back and yeah, say just kind of we want to just yeah. see where everything lands yeah. um, so but anyway yeah. it's it's um, it's extremely I mean you know shows just don't. I mean, if a show goes for more than three, four, five seasons, that's already that's oh, huge. Huge, yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. Um, so again, yeah, I was just very grateful to to have been involved in a show for for that long. Tyler Perry, I wasn't aware that you had uh, worked on Medea. Yes, um, Tyler love Perry, Medea. Did, did, he just did ha, put out a documentary on Prime. I think late last year, time is kind of in the mix, either late last year or early this year, yeah. I really got an insight about just the man and his insane <clears throat> work ethic and just I don't know, forever giving. I don't know how he does it. I mean, I don't know how he does it. I actually, uh, he's unique in that I actually haven't had that many interactions with him. Yeah. Um, not surprisingly, I guess, because he's, like you said, because he's doing a thousand things yeah. and managing a thousand things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... Um, but I have worked on um, uh, Butu, a Medea Halloween, uh, um, a Medea Family Funeral, yeah, and okay. a Medea Homecoming, as well as Nobody's Fool, which is not a <laughs> not a Medea film, but a romantic yeah. comedy, yeah, yeah, also yeah, really yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, but um, but I will say the times that I have met him, uh, he has been nothing but just the ni the nicest, yeah. like the nicest, like. Gives me a huge hug, and you can imagine he's like seven feet. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's, he's huge. this enormous guy, just like 
picks me up and, yeah. and is like, you know, thanking me. I'm like, yeah, you're thanking me. I'm thanking you. You know. <laughs> Definitely anyway, smiley look forward so to me. very, uh, very gracious guy yeah. and very, um, just a remarkable personal story of his. Yeah. How yeah. he's built what he's built yeah. over all these years. So, yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, the Medea film's so so fun to work on. They're when, so funny. And, and, and considering that these stories um, come from the mastermind, Tyler Perry himself, but also him having that, that theater background, yeah. is there ever a consideration about how uh, the plays were scored ultimately in transitioning to the films? Is there a measure of cons- consistency there that we should be looking in it, or is it just two different realms and you kind Gosh. of just drive the vehicle. I mean, you're asking the wrong person because I, I never saw the play, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's possible they took some of the plot lines and, and, um, and turned them into, uh, you know, in, into movies. Certainly, like, I think what comes through in the movies is just he, everything he brings as a character. I mean, I feel like you can trace that Probably, I don't know, but you can probably trace that back to his stage character because just the presence mm-hmm. is so particular and distinct and yeah. forceful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he feel, you know, you just sense. Okay, you've you. This is in your bones. Like yeah. you, you can. <laughs> this goes very far back, and you can bring it out kind of on a at the drop of a hat. Yeah. So anyway, I, I can't really answer your question, but it's but. That's my best guess, at least character-wise. And, and, and considering, you know, a, a lot of the stories are comedic, but also times of heart, family, and there's yeah. also, uh, you know, heavy moments as well, too. How do you approach it? I mean, and obviously you've been in, ingrained in sort of this Tyler Perry family for sure. some or, or and, and and so, like, are, are there particulars that you know you have to include? Are certain melodies, certain notes, certain instruments, or anything? You know, not this is not in terms of specific instruments, but it's really it really just all starts with with mood and and how how best to support the story. Yeah. Um, invariably, if it's a Medea film, like how the main thing is like how do I I want to make sure it's funny. But I don't want to get in the way. <laughs> it usually involves just like stepping back and just kind of letting Tyler do his thing yeah. because like he doesn't need any help from certainly not the music. <laughs> um, every now and then, like it'll it just it for the comedic moments. I think it just it's just a light touch, just yeah. enough to keep the pace going. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's kind of about it. Yeah. And then where where I can maybe do a little bit more is in, like you said, some of the more heartfelt moments or more, more dramatic moments where you do need a little bit more, you need the music to kind of do a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but with comedy, it's, it's tricky. It's yeah. comedy is the hardest thing to score. Mm. Um, any, any composer will tell you that. And it's true. It's just cause you don't want to, you don't want to get in the way. You just don't want to get in the way yeah. or make it less funny. And, and right, it's, right. that can easily happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, Okay, well, before we wrap up, um, you know, we're just coming off of award season or getting ready to step into television stuff a little bit. Yeah. Um, was there any particular films this year that was you were really wowed by the, the, the composing work of it? Anything that jumped out at oh, you? Oh, that's a great question. You know, um, okay, full disclosure, I have a seven-year-old and a five-year-old at home, so, so I, I have Patrol not... I've <laughs> <laughs> Probably Plippy. I don't know what else is in here. Bluey, Bluey for sure. Um, um, but I haven't. Love that all theme, the, by all, the way, too. The, yeah, no, it's <laughs> Bluey's. Bluey's amazing. Yeah. Um, so all that is to say, I haven't had a chance to actually see that many films. Um, yeah. In terms of, I mean, I will say, my wife and I were watching. We watched Poor Things. Oh, favorite the film other of the year. Um, and. I will, I, I gotta say, I've not heard a score like that in a very long time. Yeah. So, like, props for originality on, on that one. And I'm sorry I'm forgetting the composer's name. He has a very unique sounding name, and I'm blanking on it. But anyway, that one uh, stood out. Um, I'd have to see more. Okay. Yeah. I'd have to see more. I'm curious what your thoughts of Pi Don't ask a composer about like music. We never listen. To we, nev- we never have time to, me- to listen. It's, yeah. We're always like trying to. Because you're always grinding. Yeah. <laughs> last, it's... seriously, last question here. No, it's fine. I, with, 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 so we almost say like a trained ear. When you come into environments like this, very loud, a lot of different things happening. Are you picking up on anything that you is 
sort of triggering thoughts or having the gears turn a little bit in this environment? In like WonderCon? Yeah. Um, because I say as as fans here, we walk down the hallways. Like, what is that? Or what's that noise? And we, I, I think me mentally, I think well, what character is that involved with? But yeah. With, with you, do you think of like, huh? I could use that, or like, you know, the, what is your process in very loud, um, uh, like places like this? Like this, you know, if it's if it's too loud, it also just kind of. It's hard to parse out. It's it's hard to distinguish. So, <clears throat> I would say honestly, for me, I'm just as much uh, intrigued by by anything visual. <laughs> so it's not just. It's actually I would say not much sound at all. It's more just like if I see some somebody dressed in a really a lot of good way, I'd be like, yeah. I've, that's really cool. All right. um, so, yeah, unless somebody's, I don't know blasting a certain certain kind of music or but you know unfortunately the, the nature of conventions the halls are so big there's yeah. just everything reverberates so much yeah it's usually just it's just a blur yeah sonically so yeah yeah, yeah. i just uh probably am more inclined to just uh be wowed by something visual <laughs>